double down on award-winning sonar performance plus advanced features with the new Elite 7 HDI Hybrid Dual Imaging Fish Finder Chart Plotter by Lorance. Our widescreen 7-inch display makes it easier to view two award-winning sonar technologies along with your map. Together, for the first time, in an easier to use, easy to install, Elite Series design. Find, navigate, dominate with the new Elite 7 HDI by Lorance. Hello, I'm professional angler Gary Klein, and I invite you to take a little trip with me through my Triton 21 HP tournament rig competition boat. First of all, sorry, the very rear end of the boat. I'm powered by a 250 Pro XS Mercury, and I'm running a 26 inch Fury prop on it. Double power poles, and I have a 10 inch uh, TH hydraulic lift on it. I mean, it's it's it, it's what can I say? It works. Every boat I've rigged over a few years is identically the same. I rig them until I get them right. Once I get them right, I never change them. Same thing. Atlas 10 inch, Mercury 250, double power poles. And if I open up the back, this is one little custom thing that I've done all my career. Is I have no internal battery chargers in this boat. I have my boat rigged without an internal battery charger. And um, I run four of the Group 31 Odyssey batteries, best battery I've ever found personally. So I have no battery charger, two batteries on one side, two batteries on the other side, and that on a high performance boat is critical weight distribution for running really, really uh, strong. So that's why I have that set up on the inside. And of course, this 21 HP has two huge aerated live wells. Now I run six aerators into my live well. I have two external, I have two internal recycle pumps, and I have two that pump air or create the air oxygen, uh, you know, actually in here. And of course, it keeps those fish just as live as can be. That's not a modification, that comes standard with uh, 21 HP, or really all the Triton bass boats. Uh, kind of moving to the console, this is really where I start getting, well I'm kind of picky anyhow, because, you know folks, this is my office, and if it doesn't work, then i got to figure out why it doesn't work for me, correct the problem, and make a change. But I keep tweaking things every year so that I can make myself become a better angler, and it's not with the way I have my boat set up. It's the way now I'm starting to look at some of this high-tech equipment. Um, if you notice real quick, laying in the bottom of the boat, you'll see my little column deals. One little thing I do is I screw a little metal deal into the bottom of the boat, put a tie strap there. That way my five column uh, tags are readily available, available to me right from the bottom of the boat. The next thing is the console. And this right here, as a professional angler, is where we do all of our deciphering. I mean, we, we study the environment of the fish right here in the boat. We navigate with this electronics and we create, you know, we find patterns, establish patterns with it. I run double Lowrance units, one in the consoles, it's an, it's an HD7, and I run an HD10 on a gamble mount. The reason for that is I can fully dedicate a map on the HD7, and I can fully dedicate electronics on the HD10, especially when I'm running a structure scan. Um, these units, and I have an HD10 on the bow, we'll get to that in a moment, but these units are all connected on the ethernet. And with the Ethernet, they talk to each other. So I can waypoint here, waypoint up there, delete, move. It just makes it a lot easier. Uh, the other thing I failed to show or point out in the back of the boat is my Lowrance uh, satellite pod for my GPS. I have one in the back, and I also have one up the front. And one on the front, the reason why I put it on the front is I can pinpoint my waypoint directly underneath the trolling motor. So I do run double antennas on this boat. Moving to the front part of my boat, this is where I, you know, that's where all the, everything takes place right here. I mean, we fish, we fish on the trolling motor and catch our fish, etc. 
But let me show you, you know, Triton has a big ice chest. We don't have any ice in it right now. We have two huge compartments for tackle. This right here is something that I'm adamant about. I have a tradition. At the end of each event, I back my boat in the shop and I strip it and I put the tackle back in it for the next trip or for the next series of tournaments or for the next part of the country that I'm going to go to because I fish a lot of different stuff. That's my tackle tray and then this is the big compartment up front as you can see I have it piled up right now because we've been doing a lot of fishing here this week but I take a, a big storage container and I screw it into the bottom of the, of the top cap and this allows me to isolate my stuff up here so I don't have to chase it. When I open up the lid it's in the same place all the time. Um, of course you see my little rack hanging up there. When I get a good bait or something, I'll make a couple up for the tournament. I have them hanging out right there ready for me to get them. The other modification that I do is I take my rod organizer out of the rod locker because I cannot carry enough fishing rods in a Triton boat. Uh, you know, and you can put 15 in there with a rod organizer, but I usually carry somewhere between 30, 35, 40 rods because I'm fishing multiple lakes under different conditions. So I have to have a variety of equipment with me. <coughs> My rod locker over here, of course, it's a mask we've been fishing. Don't worry about it, it's dirty. The one thing that you would notice is I have a spare trolling motor laying in the bottom of the boat. And that's one thing that I've learned. Um, just through trial and error is I always carry a spare trolling motor. It's like a flat tire. If you have a flat tire and you don't have a spare, you're pretty much out of commission. Trolling motor, I can always fish. And that right there is what I do on my work time. So I've always carried a spare with me my entire career. I'll never be without one. I'll never use it anymore. You know, the motor guys are just phenomenal, but I still have it. There's a couple little things on the bow of the boat that some may find interesting. Is I have a wireless uh, keypad up here for my power points. Up down switch. Uh, I have to run no hard wires. This is all key, uh, wireless. So that right there is kind of new technology. Uh, this is the first year I've ran it because we just came out with it. But I found it to be pretty darn awesome. If you notice on my motor guide trolling motor, I run a 36 volt. Um, but I run a standard shaft, which is a 45 inch motor guide trolling motor. And if you notice that red handle, that does not come stock on the red board. That is called the red one. Uh, the first time I ever saw one of those, I went ballistic because it was the answer to a lot of the issues I have with a rope. Ropes break, they have a lot of spring to them. You get in a heavy aquatic vegetation, you can't pop your trolling motor up. If anybody runs the red one, they will never use another application on the trolling motor. I mean, that's the deal right there. Again, I have double mount, uh, double electronics up front. If you notice, I have my HD7 cap. I never use it. This right here is pretty much just de de designated for my split screen because I do all my fishing up here. I don't need that information. I've already gotten here by using my electronics on the console. I've already navigated to where I'm going to fish. And then I fish. You notice that I have a trolling. Uh, I actually have two transducers, but I really love to make sure that you have a transducer on the base of the trolling motor. That way, what I'm reading here is directly underneath me. That's it. That's my Triton 21 HP. And if you don't know, now you know. With over 20 years in the industry, I've seen a lot of product. Nano Phil from Berkeley is one of the most revolutionary fishing lines ever introduced. Nano means small, minuscule, microscopic. And Phil emphasizes the hundreds of stronger than steel Dyneema nanofilaments that after molecular linking and shaping, create the world's first unifilament fishing line. Berkeley Nanofil Unifilament. It's the next generation in fishing lines.